Home buying starts with having a plan in place. I've put together a video series on the different steps of purchasing a home. And I've broken it up because not everyone needs all of the steps all at once because there's different times, different phases of the buying process. Today, I want to look into how much money you need to purchase a home right after this. Hello, I'm Anthony, the Home Guy Waco, and each week I put together a video pertaining to real estate in the Waco area. Today, I want to go into how much money you need to have on hand whenever you decide it's time to purchase a home. Whether you're a first time home buyer, this is your second home, third home, a lot of times I get the question, how much do I need to buy a home and what does it cost? As a buyer, how much cash do I need to close? There's a lot of factors that go into how much cash that you would need at the closing table, but the first one is determining how much down payment that you're going to need according to your financing if you are financing. Um, FHA loans, you need 3.5% of the sale price. Conventional loans, I've seen go as low as 3%, usually 5 or up to 20% down payment. VA loans can get along with zero on the down payment side. So it all depends on your financing and how much home that you're looking to purchase. But let's just use an FHA loan for an example. So 3.5% of every $100,000 worth of home would be $3,500. Let's say you're looking into a home that's $200,000. You would need at least $7,000 as a down payment. The next thing besides down payment to consider is closing cost. Closing cost runs the buyer Generally, if you haven't asked for a concession from the seller, just straight closing cost is somewhere in the neighborhood of 3 to 4% of the sale price of the home. Start thinking in the lines of how much money I'm going to need to close this loan. How much cash is that going to take when I get to the closing table? You'll need that cash on hand as well. There are also some fees um, that are associated with the purchase of a home, such as option money. That's money that is given to the buyer to give you the option to back out for any reason for a set number of days. Generally, that runs anywhere from $50 to $500, depending upon the price of the home. Also, inspection money. Inspections right now are running in the neighborhood of three to $400. Depends on the inspector, depends on the size of the home. Could be more, could be less, but that would be between you and an inspector. If you're going to need a insect inspection as well, I know the VA requires that. That's another $80 to $120. If the home is built with a septic system, um, it's always suggested that you have a septic uh, inspection done. You can also have a multitude of other inspections to just depending upon the house. So you need to have set aside somewhere between $500 and $1,000 for inspections. Moving expenses, um, you would need that cash on hand as well. Are you moving across the country? Are you moving across town? Do you have buddies with pickup trucks if you're moving across town? Um, are you going to have to put things in storage before your, your new place is able to close? Um, those are all things to consider when getting your cash together and determining how much money you're going to need to purchase a home. The other thing I talk to uh, first-time home buyers especially about is you need to try to figure out what your living expenses are going to be and try to have three to six months, preferably six months, set aside in case something would happen and you would still be able to make your mortgage payment and live for, for six months. And the reason I say that, especially now that we're, we've come through this COVID pandemic and now it's flaring up again, tomorrow's never promised as far as jobs and work, that type thing. So have three to six months at least set aside so that when there are issues, if something does arrive and you're not able to work or, you know, anything could happen, make sure you have some money set aside for three to six months of expenses. The other thing to consider while getting all of this money in order and thinking about how much you're going to need and how you're going to get to that number to get ready to buy your home is start checking on your credit score. Check on your credit score early. You can get a free credit report annually. I suggest everyone gets a free credit report annually. Fix any mistakes that may be on there. There, you, you never know. I know whenever I start talking to, to 
people about purchasing a home, they have their credit ran, they look and they're like, where are all these names coming from? Well, anytime anybody's looked up credit on you, if they've misspelled your name, if they used an alias, if they used a maiden name, it will show up on your credit report. Sometimes those cause mistakes to end up on your credit report. Get those taken off as soon as possible. I've seen those raise the credit score 20 to 30 points just by getting the mistakes off of the report. Also, I used to work in a finance office at a car dealership. You would not believe some of the things I've seen on people's credit. If you still have the bill from when you were in college fighting with the cable company, your roommate was supposed to pay it and didn't, but it's on your credit, go ahead and pay that $180, $150, whatever it is. It's killing your credit and has for years. And I can guarantee, because it's lowered your credit score somewhere along the way, you've paid more for, for something that you didn't need to. All because you were mad at the roommate 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, go ahead and take care of that old cable bill. So you're ready to buy a home and you know that you need this much money. How are you going to get there? How are you going to save? First piece of advice I would give anyone that's wanting to purchase a home but might not have the cash available is start living on a budget. Yes, you may be paying rent somewhere. Add so much money to your rent payment. Don't give it to the landlord. Put it over here in a savings account. Add, you know, if you can afford an extra fifty, hundred dollars a month, go ahead and start putting that aside. Before you know it, that will build up to the money that you need to purchase a home. Also, I'm a big proponent of declutter. Even if you own a home, if you're renting, you have things that you no longer use, need. If anything has value, sell it. Take that money. Set it aside in your housing fund jar. Whatever you have to do, if home ownership is something that you strive for and you need to come up with the money, go ahead and start trying to figure out ways to stop spending all that you're spending and start putting money aside in a little jar. And before you know it, you'll have the cash that you need on hand and ready to move on in the home buying process. Once you have all your finances in order and kind of know the price of the home you're going to be looking for, we'll move into the next step of the buying process. I'll have that video out here for you to view when you're ready. Yeah.